North American Summer Split. We're booting up for our first match of the day. Team Dignitas versus Complexity. And yesterday, Dig held on to first place with a pretty nice win over Team Solomid. Didn't hurt. Yeah, but Dignitas, amongst all that, still showed a lot of room for improvement. You know, by and large, Dignitas was playing fast and loose in that game. They have the start of a plan a lot of times, like go to Baron or let's invade level one. But it doesn't seem like they have fully thought out strategies and they just rely on their ability to adapt on the fly and play well mechanically. It's been working for them, but it means they can still have more polish. Right, and while Dignitas holding on to first, now you gotta think that Complexity are the real underdogs in this fight. They're now alone in last place after their loss to Evil Geniuses. Yeah, and these guys, they have continued to struggle and their loss to EG was much more one-sided than they would want, considering that was a seventh place versus eighth place team, and it seems like that gap is very large. So a big red flag for complexity is that they probably end up dying uh, in more isolated lane scenarios than mm -hmm. other teams. So it's a really concerning thing because Kez came in, gave them good strategy and good wards. But if they're dying 2v2 in the bottom lane, or if they're dying 1v1 in the top lane, none of that strategy or vision control will matter, and they have to remedy that first. All right, let's see if they can remedy it right away. Let's get into the starting lineups. On the blue side, it's Dignitas. That top lane is going to be Zion Spartan. Crumbs in the jungle. Shifter in mid lane. I'm a cutie pie at 80 carry, and Kiwi Kid chatting it up on support. And on the red side, it is Complexity. With West Rice in the top lane, Kez in the jungle. Prawley in mid lane, Robert Exley on AD, and Bubba Dub on support. At least Prawley is a... Red in the face right there. A little red. Something always happy. Down. Always smiling. Maybe see what happened on all chat. Maybe like the joke TV was show. on him. That's right. We always know. know now. Something, Something funny. Self-ready. We got to remember. <laughs> Still that. <laughs> Someday. We'll know right away. But uh, the pentakill in the LCS came from this game. Broken yeah. Shard graciously walked out of the fountain. He was to trying to defend the Nexus. Really. But that was a 15-0-4 LeBlanc. So yeah. Shifter coming out real big in that game. And we'll see if Dignitas is kind of not just like resting on the laurels of having good skill. And they're really exactly. trying to advance themselves so they can beat the better teams consistently. And we talk about it often, but trap games. Dignitas yeah. is a team that seems to kind of rise to the level of their opponents or fall to the level of their opponents if that is right. to be considered. Remember in week one, when they had that amazing 3-0 start, last game of the week was against Team Curse. They lost that pretty handily. Yeah. Taking the toss at Team, and when they have the motivation from their fans, they start to slow down a bit. But when nobody believes in them, then they go on a win streak. You can even it out and always get the wins in. Yeah. Kalen, Kalen Ziggs being out banned there. Soon as somebody believes in Dignitas, they somehow lose the ability to win. It's a strange thing. See Thresh banned out. Bubba Dub has been a real playmaker for Complexity. Going down in lane, they can usually get a few, if not just the lane aggression back. I was going to say kills, but teams really aren't letting them Complexity get any yeah. kills in any of their games. I wonder with this ban phase, because they've obviously banned out Ziggs. Uh, when EG play Complexity, they pick Ziggs away. But they also had a first-time ban in the North American LCS this split, which was Jace. Right. Because Prawley had been practicing so much of it. Uh, I wonder, actually, if Complexity would just break out the Jace in this game and try and surprise Dignitas. Complexity is known to actually do those sorts of things, Jap. Probably bringing out the Annie whenever he wants to. Knows his matchups. The Brahm's going to be quick. Oh. He locked in for a Kiwi Kid after a quick stint on Zyra for his past mm -hmm. few games. He will go back. This is one of the rare games when Thresh was actually banned. Uh, it basically tunnels Bubba Dub into Morgana mm -hmm. to play against Brong as far as the supports that can compete with him. And it also means that uh, if Dignitas gets the 2v0 or 2v1, it's actually much better for them because Brom isn't the strongest very early on in 2v2s. Yeah, very interesting. Slow going right now for Complexity. West they did this Rice. yesterday too. Yep. After the pick band phase, it seemed like they were a little surprised by the way the bands and picks went down and then had to hesitate for their first picks. Wow. Locking in Cassidy completely blind on this one. They want it first and they want it for Prawley. Damn. There's an outside chance we could see the top lane Cassidy. I've been seeing a lot more of it in solo All right. queue. All right. Uh, kind of the same build Voiboy Boy did when he was in the mid lane, heavy armor, and then trying to transition out of there. Uh, not necessarily likely. It's probably a mid lane casting, but it does. Mm -hmm. uh, casting is becoming somewhat of a flex pick. It warrants the thought. Mm -hmm. We'll see what Crumbs and Shifter have with that idea in mind, because it's running through our minds. It's obviously an inkling there, but maybe they won't grab hold either. A quick Elise pickup coming in for Crumbs gives him some safe play as well as execution in initiating fights. Shifter, I, he 
can really round out whatever he wants now, but he's always been a waiter to see what the rest of the team is. Yeah. The Elise Lee Sin VIP junglers that we've yeah. been seeing so much uh, means Dinger Toss are the right. only ones allowed in the club right now. And the question <laughs> will become uh, where Kez defaults back to. His best games were by far on Lee Sin. He had a very underwhelming Nocturne game, uh, which is actually something Crumbs has been really, He's really pushing, liking. Man. Yeah. So, so a little bit isn't bad against yesterday. him because he can block the stun in duels. That's true. And there's not many, well, I guess there's a few things you'd have in that fight. Flame Breath, it Brahms Q, Winter's Bite can break that shield. Well, there's a lot of stuff yeah. that can mess up Nocturne still, that's for sure. Waiting on the pick. They did get Lucian, so Complexity keeps themselves in the 80 carry club. Mm -hmm. They'll be able to lock that down for Robert X. Lee. And it, the Eve is going yeah. to come back into play for Kaz. It's been a few weeks since anybody has really tried their hand on Eve. Yeah, that'll be an interesting choice, actually. I'd like it uh, more in isolation against Dignitas, because Dignitas definitely builds more green wards, or buys more green wards than other yeah. teams. And Eve gets to be... Immune to those guys. Dude, if I was messing with this a little bit, he'll be picking an AD carry. <laughs> Probably Jinx or Twitch. Bloop. There we go. Jinx has really been making a resurgence with Twitch as well. on the board. He did this as well yesterday. QDubai's stats last year were, were different as well. He went with tons of kills on Jinx and then played like almost four or five straight games of Lucian with almost mm -hmm. zero wins. And then back to Jinx and he got two wins in a row on it. So I think he's just saying, I'll, I'll go back to the Jinx this time make everything look like a turret as usual. Shifter Zoriana as well was really on point yeah. yesterday. Probably him and Cutie Pie, despite the chaos of the game, uh, were both deathless Yep. in that one. Real. It was actually a really plays. funny death distribution for Ding and Toss. Their damage dealers, Zion, Shifter, and Cutie Pie, never died. And then Crumbs and Kiwi Kid died a combined 10 times. Yep. So it was very much <laughs> a, hey, look at us in the front line. We are going to be the guys who take damage. And the back line just doing their damn duties. Almost as clean of a distribution as you can think of. And Bubba Dub, we talked about the Morgana a little bit earlier. We'll be locking that in. Good protection for Cats. Gonna have to make sure he doesn't get locked up by Crumbs coming down to the bottom lane. We haven't really seen too many standard lane matchups. And especially with the Jinx, I don't know if we'll get it this time either. Yeah. They're gonna toss. Maybe they're just not gonna trade. Maybe we get to see Kiwi Kid in the mid lane this time. And shift around support prom. They actually have to <laughs> trade before 20 seconds, surprisingly enough. And uh, no one's mouse is on keyboard. It's there they traded. They traded 30 seconds. <laughs> Nothing to see here. But really, the composition from Complexity feels very low damage and high control. So it's the West Rice on the Renekton and the cast in the mid lane for some roaming. Uh, if they don't jump out into a very big lead in this one, I feel like Dignitas will just straight out outscale. All right, we'll get touched on the lanes right in the beginning of the game. Right now, it's time to check how you're calling this showdown. According to LOLEsports.com, you're tipping this in Dig's favor with a bit of 91% of the vote towards complexity on this. Complexity yeah. bringing out the Kez team. We'll see if they can group it back up. I feel like those 90% votes actually end up going the other way more often than you would expect them yep. for 90% vote. You can also vote on Twitter. Send yep. the hashtag DigWin or ComplexityWin to at LOL Esports. You see a well win. Now that's not audio. Everybody's getting awake and ready to vote. Yeah. We'll see that change as the game goes on. Saw Complexity. The games before as yeah, well. exactly. People are, people are just getting their popcorn ready, getting back from the bathroom. It's game time. You know what it is. So waiting to get into this one. First one of day two here. We had some crazy games yesterday. We also had some kind of just all-out stomps yesterday. So teams are trying to regroup from that. They yep. got their win, obviously coming out very strong here. But this is a game complexity needs to win. We've seen yep. complexity beat top teams in the league, and this is a possibility here. A 2-9 and nine team coming in this one. Obviously, expectations weren't weren't incredibly high for complexity. Mm -mm. And no one will really blame them if they lose this game to Dignitas, but uh, that's not the mindset they need to be in if they want to remain a LCS team. Sitting in eighth place, if they finish the season like this, would automatically put them back in the promotion tournament. Place where they just came from this last split. They had that incredibly thrilling series against Coast, mm. who, by the way, Shifter and Zion Spartan were a part of that team. They landed all right. Right. 
Seems to have worked out pretty yeah. well, especially for Crumbs, who we're looking at right now. Has a pink ward early. It really makes me think, in his positioning, Ooh. that they're almost going to do the same thing Dig did to Cloud9 and start vision completely on that area. They feel yeah. like with a pink ward early, they can cover that. Yeah, this is a invade early on that we saw a little bit less of yesterday. That's right, yeah. Uh, not many five-man invades. The sweep early on from Kez shows you his propensity for vision control, but Kiwi Kid also says he can 1v5 early game on Braum, so they're going to try and get a catch <laughs> if they could, but he would have to land another Q while they collapsed. And complexity, unlike TSM, invaded with all five. Yesterday, TSM invaded right. that spot, if you flip the map, uh, with only four people, which let Dignitas crush them. This time, they just get the deep board and get out of there. Let's see what they decide to do. It looks like it's just for the vision. And Crumbs is making his way towards the top side. Wards have already been placed for Dig as well, so they're not too scared in movement, but they also are setting themselves up right on a ward, hatching that one. Jeez. The ward, they should see that ward die, and then they move out. However, I think they were spotted by the ward before they made the brush, so Complexity should still be fearful, which is why they're deserting. Good play there. Four squad moving in for Dig. Dignitas just played this level one amazingly. Notice how they did a three-man invade without their jungler. And Crumbs is soloing yep. his own buff. And since Kez is starting on the absolute middle quadrant of the map, if Crumbs sweeps all the way down to his red, it's a perfect three buff start for Dignitas. Able to sweep out some of those wards as well, so it's clear on Crumbs' side for free movement in the jungle. He's gonna get both. They've got a three buff start on this one. And you're gonna see Kez now. He's gonna be going to look for that blue buff. Yeah, that was really clean by Dignitas. And it's hard to believe that this would be a team that doesn't think of level ones, right? They, they claim that they are not doing that, but that was yeah. an incredibly clean response to a five-man invade, something that North American teams have not really done this split. Kez is left without blue buff, and that's pretty big for EVE. Really Zion does need play. to be wary of this gank, though. You can see that it's kind of forcing Kez now to push his hand into oh, a gank. Yeah. They have great positioning. There's his blue buff. Oh, it's so close. He wants it, and he's going to get his blue buff. Oh, no. What a backfire. Well, <laughs> the best laid plans of Mice and Men. Oh, man. That was an unfortunate thing for Zion. And that's the thing about the E-Pick, right? You can put your wards in the river, yeah. but they're not going to inform you whatsoever unless it's a pink or unless it's right next to a buff that Kez is actually going to be attacking to reveal him. A really, I'd say, lucky gank oh, yeah. right there by oh, Kez. Oh, yeah. He, Zion needed to be turtling that up a lot more, knowing that Kez without his buffs and without blue needs to gank, and that was his natural progression. Feeling a little too strong. A flash pushed out. Good hold on Crumbs. Waiting for the cocoon. They go ahead, and now they have a bit more pressure on Prolly in the mid lane. Kez, do great work for himself. Keep an eye on him in this, him this game. Yeah. Good push in the bottom lane by Complexity. So it he did. He played it against LMQ. Right. Actually had a pretty good game, if you remember. That game was a close one. So one of his first two with complexity, so he definitely feels comfortable on it. Oh man. Knowing the flash is down. The red buff is there as well. They're gonna be able to stick on him like glue for this one, but there's not enough damage to finish up the kill. Still backed out of lane. He already used teleport. It's gonna yep. be a long walk. And the lane is positioned such that Westrise doesn't have to yeah. shove it. And he can begin some farm denial. So this will be a test for Westrice. You know, he's been granted a pretty big edge in this lane, mm -hmm. experience-wise. And we have the isolated lane matchups. So Westrice is a guy who's actually been struggling a lot in 1v1 matchups. And he needs to capitalize on this one and actually destroy his lane. So we'll see what this pressure for Dig does. We saw a little bit that Kez was coming mid lane. Pro or Shifter, rather, has his flash up. But will Shifter feel like he needs to start carrying the game? They still have a lot of time to work with. Just have to make sure complexity doesn't get that much more ahead in this early game. We've seen Robert actually with a triple kill completely carry a game against Cloud9. So little little steps for complexity in the early game are actually quite big. Yeah, the standard laning did not work out for Dignitas mm -mm. because of the early gank from Kez. Buff control worked great and now what they're a in grab. trouble. Just on the outside, very nice hit on the cutie pie. Complexity gaining pressure in the bot lane too. That could have been an all-in from Complexity, but they were fearful of the Braum stun oh. because Kiwi Kid had landed that Winter's Bite right on to Robert X. Lee. Four hits would have stunned him. Uh, so he did decided against the all-in, but it will force Cutie back to base, mm -hmm. uh, which means this Lucian lane, as we said, with the Braum early on in the laning phase, typically isn't incredibly strong. Lucian also a stronger laner than Jinx. Yeah. And Complexity is uh, playing to the advantage of their champions, right? 
Lucian should be Jinx in lane. Renekton should be Chibana in lane. But that's not something Complexity has necessarily been doing yet this split. It's really working out well for him. <laughs> Bubba Dub throwing down in the face of Kiwi Kid, just showing no fear. We get Robert X Lee backing on this. We saw great harass with those piercing lights in lane that Cutie Pie just could not put up with. They'll return to lane with about the same, but we've been seeing Cutie Pie picking up that early pink ward as well. So yeah. they may be trying to gather something and get crumbs down there quite soon. This is a really curious game. Kez's early game pressure on Eve has been really impressive. Already being level five. And I do just want to keep going back to this laning uh, situation for Complexity because it has typically been actually their greatest struggle as a team. Uh, they picked very right. strong laners this game. I think to bypass some of the main issues they had yesterday against EG. When they got straight up 2v2 in the bottom lane by Krepo and Alltech, the game was over. Twitch just destroyed them after right. that. So they have picked incredibly powerful laning champions right here. And all of them are actually winning their lane. A lot of people will say Kassadin is not a strong laner because they're still remembering the old pre-rework Kassadin. With the instant magic shield, Kassadin actually should beat a lot of the conventional right. mids in that straight up matchup, especially now that he's level six. Trading well with Shifter in lane, both of them. And actually putting Shifter down at CS, making it hard. Shifter's been pushing probably into the turret, so he's keeping that up. And also going for Doran, so he's trying to keep himself safe, knowing Shifter will go hard. We'll see if Prowley can keep it up. We know he is the one for Complexity to help carry the game. But like you said, with everybody starting strong this time, we'll see if Complexity can kind of put the strength they have towards oh. late game now. A little Kiwi. bit of harass. You annoying kid right there. <laughs> That's really going to hurt Prowley, actually, because at this point, Shifter has his blue buff immediately. Yeah. Shifter went to lane after blue buff, which means he actually gets more use of that blue buff immediately. Prowley gets blue and then goes back to base. But he's got teleport, so actually... Bam. He's back. Very nicely done and back to lane. Not seeing too much from Kaz since his first few ganks. West Rice has had a great lead and is holding that 59 to 38 in the top lane. Starting to go for a TMAT for himself with his early lead. Back to the bottom, we see Robert X Lee is 61 to 54. Cutie Pie is sticking with, but you can see how they can't even trade damage to complexity right now. It's all about farming. I'm just happy with that at this point. We do know that Dignitas has a better late game team composition. Mm -hmm. Unless Prawley got absolutely massive, in which case the casting might be able to do <laughs> a lot of work. But really, Dignitas, this feels early on like another game where maybe they just underestimated complexity a little bit. Yeah. They felt so confident after that TSM one yesterday, and then they think, yeah, these guys are two and nine. What's really gonna happen? Maybe they're just gonna do a standard game plan. Uh, the early game triple buff start was a nice reaction to what Complexity yeah. did, but then was easily uh, recovered by Kez because Zion got greedy trading early on Javon against Renekton when he didn't need to. Right. And now they're kind of on their back foot since Evelyn has so much control and because Complexity has stronger laners. Well, hopefully Dig can remember that late game team. A lot of teams kind of just go in and they, they're so far behind, they need to push themselves into situations that don't allow you to get the late game, and everything starts to domino on top of you. Mm. Hopefully Dignitas realizes that some of the early dragons, if alts weren't up, oh. would be safe. Cutie Pie, very nice hit up coming from the Glacial Fisher. Whoa. They're going to be safe on this one, Kiwi though, except for Kiwi Kid. Yeah, that was different on the Soul Shackle. Before he gets locked up, he tried to really deny Robert X Lee's damage, and Crumbs is going to have to be an onlooker for this one. Yeah, knowing the Cutie Pie's flash is down, though, if Eve gets this, the little bit on him, it could be a great counter game. Kez, Kez is there the perf time. There it is. Hard at Blaze coming out from Robert X. Lee, he finalizes the shot onto Cutie Pie. Crumbs, that is not how you get over the wall on that one, buddy. He is going to go down to the hands of Kez. Very nice play. Complexity coming up big around the map. So not only is Dig a step slow arriving to ganks, they're a click off when they're trying to pull yep. off their spells right now. This could be a Dignitas team on tilt against a Complexity team who mentally they think had no chance against them. So once they start losing, it just hurts even more. This is already a better game than the last time these two teams faced Jack. Complexity only got three kills in that game. Right now they have the only four in this one and a 4,000 gold lead. Yeah, and 4,000 gold leads aren't easy to come back from. This was an example of the Braum stun creating initiation. I don't really know what Kiwi Kid was thinking here. Uh, he didn't have the finishing damage, and all of his spells were on cooldown, so that was a straight-up misplay at that point, because Cutie Pie could not come in range to follow up that damage, and a Morgana ult was sitting on both of them. 
Then the counter gank comes. Cutie Pie stuck around without a flash because Crumbs was telling him to, but they completely forgot about the Evelyn. Then this flash was just a uh, unfortunate event right there. Kez flashed again to close the distance and guarantee the kill. Kez everywhere he needs to be right now. 2-0-1 and 2-0-0 the kills core was looking at for complexity. The teleport back to top lane as well for West, West Rice. He still holds that 30 CS lead and it looks like every timing he needs has been hitting perfectly in his lane. Didn't miss any of the CS and Zion Spartan even gives a second thought to just the presence of West Rice when he goes to place award. Nobody's really been up there since the beginning, though. It seems like Kaz was all right with the two hits on, on Zion Spartan. They said, we took a bit of that solo lane carry away, and we'll be able to focus on the other lanes. And he's done a great job, too. Success in the bottom. Yeah, they got success on Flash and Shifter. And in the bottom lane, Cutie Pie actually did a very interesting thing. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to hit his BF sword, he sold his Doran's Blade. So he is a squishier target down yeah. there. Uh, Doran's Blade doesn't necessarily scale great into the end game, but the health already in a lane they were losing uh, will be a little bit dangerous if they get into another 3v3. Kind of like this. That flash is down from last time. That's going to be a spider up, a spider down. And it looks like he is going to be out of the game for now. Kiwi Kid tries to get himself to safety. They really weren't able to even put that uh -oh. much damage onto complexity. Kiwi Kid caught out a little bit there, and you starting to get the Cassidy going. This is not looking good for Dig. This is exactly what complexity needed to do to win this game. They picked such a strong early game team, and they are capitalizing on every last bit of it right now. Look at this lead West Rice has held in the top lane. We haven't really looked back here since no. the early games because there's been so much else going on. But West Rice is really doing work up there against Silent Spartan, taking his advantage and actually making it count. He's been doing what he can on a lot of champions. Played Lulu the last time, did not work out for him. So back to the wheelhouse and he is putting up some numbers in the CS. Really, uh, somebody that's been focused by a lot of teams. They'll go for West Rice early in the yep. game, know they can take him out. He's teleported to, to Turret East uh, early rather sometimes and teams take that into consideration. This time he's fixed all of those little errors and it's really paying off for the rest of the team across the map. Great job by Complexity. This is a really, really big lead that you do not expect when you see a matchup of the first place team versus the last yeah. place team in the North American LCS, but that's what can happen uh, when Complexity picks such an early game team and Dignitas plays so sloppily in the early game. Uh, they can't just rely on their on their skill to win this one. They right. needed to have better communication and honestly probably a better early game plan to deal with this. This is Almost a classic underestimation of complexity, but complexity is showing up. I keep considering what would have happened if Zion Spartan, oh, did not get hit up for that blue buff in the early part of the game. Good aggression in the bot here. Mm -hmm. Would Dignitas have had a much more solid game? How far behind would Kez be? But he made the right moves. Exactly, you consider what happened when they got that blue buff back. It caught Kez back up in experience. Yeah. And it gave West Rice a lead up there, so Kez could then ignore it. And it also, in a sense, put Crumbs a little bit behind. Because when you do those uh, sneaky around the side invades and getting no pulls and stuff in the early game, you put yourself at a bit of a sacrifice, which normally is acceptable because yeah. the other jungler is even farther behind. But it turned out the other jungler just got put farther ahead of him. And as a result, if we look at the jungle items, for instance, uh, Kez's Lizard Elder is well stacked as far as gold generation so far that he's been able to get off of it. And that's very important. Complexity is definitely a team to be reckoned with. One of their other wins that they have is against Cloud9. Like we said at the beginning here, this is definitely a team that they can beat. Kez getting a bit found out there and very good at just not tunneling for the fact that they had an engage. He backed off. Complexity lives to fight another day. So 6,500 gold and yeah. two turrets to zero. And still only 27% of the Twitter vote. Come on, guys. Complexity is doing fantastic. They've already had a big upset this year when they took down Cloud9. Yeah, right. And Cloud9 yeah, and Curse again, so right. far. And that Shifter, haven't really seen too many plays from him this game. The mid has not been able to roam. I shouldn't say that. Probably did. Shifter's kind of been alone and staying there. He did catch back up on CS, but he's not an impactful amount of items and ready to fight with the rest of the team. A minute on Dragon. They have crowd control and teleport up for that fight on the side of Dignitas. It might be what they need, but Complexity would have to walk into that yeah. in just a silly manner and throw it away. I mean, top lane has a two-level advantage. Right. Westress over Zion Spartan. They can both teleport down to meet each other, and then Renekton would be much stronger because of the second rank in his ultimate. 
Uh, and then every other person on Complexity is also much stronger. They're just looking for catch after catch, and Dignitas is so much on their back foot, it's not even funny. Look at where the wards are. Yeah, I was going to say, Complexity right no now. blue. Everywhere Crumbs goes is either stolen or in full view. No blue, all red wards on the bottom side as the Complexity sets up a bit of a security system. All of their pink wards, really, have been staying alive as well. Crumbs' pink ward died quite early that he put just behind his red buff and they haven't been able to get any more into the side of Prawley's jungle either. No countering this game from Dignitas. We see Crumbs doing that all the time. He's been on his side of the map. That's different. Yeah, and with Dragon up, it should be another secure for Complexity. Coming back in a game like this, when you lose th this much, lost this much vision control, mm -hmm. is no easy task. It's not like you can just go and make a play. Complexity has two teleports that are both completely free on cooldown, so if Dignitas does find something, Complexity can teleport in. It, requires a monumental amount of luck and planning for Dig to come back in this one. Just missed the dragon. Gets a shot on. There we go. Crumbs taking a bit. Offers his cocoon as well for a taste of the same medicine. And crowd control. But it looks like Complexity is just winning everything they need to. Zion Spartan is not in a teleport situation. Neither is Westrice. Both can stop each other. Dignitas is going to set up. Yeah, they kind of want to fight this one, but it is an incredibly dangerous place for them to be. Oh, he doesn't oh. stop if he thought he got far enough away. And now who's it going to be? Can Zion Spartan get away? Now it's a 1v1 in the top lane, and the rest of the teams are communicating on who can make the 4v4 yeah. happen better. And now Westrice actually would have to stop Zion Spartan from teleporting in, but a Zion Spartan teleporting in with no dragons to send yeah. half health isn't that impactful. <laughs> Unless it's great poke by Dick, in the middle. Considering Kez's half health just from the dragon, Dickentoss is holding this off really, really well. They still have a rocket. They can put some impact damage down. Prolly is doing a great job, but he's going to be running out of mana soon. Does not have blue buff to get him refreshed. Kiwi Kid just on the outside. Repel for vision as Robert X Lee and Kaz are trying to trade out a bit of damage. It's still so back and forth. It's, this tug of war is ridiculous. Yeah, if Dignitas could turn something here, it could very well get them back in the game. It's actually miraculous that they're able to do this with their 7,000 gold disadvantage. There's a very indecisive play here from Complexity, yeah. but Dignitas they is disengaging. Could have just bursted down the dragon and gotten yeah. over there, but they've stuck around to this point that they're low enough on resources that they can't do that anymore, and Dignitas is actually on the offensive. I also don't think Dignitas is strong enough yeah. to stay <laughs> on the dragon, which is why this is such a push and pull. Cannot be pushed in. Zion Spartan is backing right now, so he's going to be at the fountain if he decides to go anywhere. He's going to mid turret. No, that's them coming back. All right. I thought All there was a, a, a ward on that recover. side. Getting me scared. Slowing it down a little bit. It looks like without having Zion Spartan decide to teleport up and the teleport back from probably in mid lane, that was not Zion. They're going to be able to get the dragon. Finally, Woo! one hell of a dance there from both teams. Six to zero. Yeah. It was a come up on 19 minutes, and that's a pretty big gold lead at about 8,000. Yeah, once Prawley actually came back. Yeah. Aww. Crocodile took his lunch. Where's that want want? Yeah. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. So Prawley, uh, blue buffless, unfortunately. That would have really benefited him in the mid lane matchup against Prawley. Westerners won't take much advantage of that blue buff. But he's still got a 60 CS lead on Zion. Ah, Kez gives it to him. Now Kez has to shop. Westrice, look at what you've done. Complexity looking absolutely amazing. Now they're in full control. Underdogs ahoy. Yeah. They're definitely climbing their way back up. This, not to take anything away from Complexity, who have actually played this game really, really well, uh, is a continuing problem for Dignitas. They look amazing one game. That's true. And then they just fall apart and look like they're not doing anything the next one. From, I I want I was going to say from minute one. From minute one, they look good. Yeah. From minute two, when Zon Spartan died and gave up blue buff, it's been all downhill from there. It's such a, a calculated first move and then changed over so easily just with the blue buff given back in one yeah. gank. Both teams sizing each other up and setting up as well. Robert actually is far ahead of Cutie Pie in items right now. Charged up Thurster, Asheen as well. He's going to be able to take down turrets as well as champions as he goes into these fights. And we said, give Robert X Lee a lead. Give, give Complexity a lead, and they will start to carry the game yep. across all lanes. Just putting pressure on the mid lane now, trying to get Dignitas to move to the beat of their drum. And you can see, oh, Robert X Lee, a little too close for comfort. 
But he's going to get those sheen shots on the turret and prep that for whenever they need to open up the map a little bit more. It is a little tricky for Complexity to find fights at the moment, as long as Westrice is doing the split push game that he's doing right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Kez is very magic resist focused because it's a very magic damage heavy team, as long as I'm Kitty Pie's behind on Jinx. Uh, so, as far as creating turret dives, it's difficult. They just need to keep taking the objectives as they spawn. It's one of those things that the better teams do better is always knowing what to do next. And it actually feels like Complexity is a little lost as to what to do next right now. They've gotten ward coverage on the red buff, but there's no red buff to take. They've already taken the dragon, but they're not prepping Baron yet. So what are they actually doing right now outside of sitting in mid lane? You can see Dignitas is almost aware of this. We just saw the cocoons and whatnot trying to hit Bubba Dub as they went into this area. Once again, they're trying to get their small catches. And I think Complexity is waiting for that to be a mistake. Maybe they'll find it, maybe they won't. So far, mid turret goes down, but Complexity or Dignitas, I should say, is only going to get stronger. The late game is coming up for them. They're getting bigger and bigger. Haven't yeah. seen the, a command shockwave, really, of Shifter change a fight, and we know him Don't to do that. I think he's used it. No. There hasn't been an opportunity to. Uh, Kasten is too slippery, generally, to land a shockwave on, and the team fights just haven't materialized. Because, honestly, if they did, Dignitas wouldn't stand a chance. Yeah. Definitely have to make a move. Six to zero. 10,000 gold in the lead and somehow stalled out at the turrets here. Complexity is kind of trying to find their way in, push Dignitas into something rough. And if they can get to that time, they've been a lot better at forcing necessary barons that they need to get back in the game and making a fight go their way. Yeah, normally that would be what Dignitas wants to do, but in this one, they've just, they've just dropped the ball too many times, it seems like. The 10,000 gold lead at 22 minutes uh, is nearly insurmountable. Yeah. It's really crazy to think the complexity is winning this handily over the first place team in the North American LCS. With so kind of that, zero that response spirit. as well. Probably was really happy in the pregame. He was. Yep. And knew what was up. What if they set or eight? They do it. All right, this is Dignitas game. actually trying to make a play. They're trying to group up his five because Complexity is trying to get the wave shoving, and they know the mid turret is actually a little bit low. Once they finally get to turrets, Cutie Pie can start doing some work. You see that Jinx get to business, cast it in the bot lane, has teleport to get back, and Westrice and him can't use this to really get Dignitas to spread themselves thin. You can teleport wherever you want. You can see how they're kind of deciding who to send, where to go. Shifter's going to back here, so Dig's just looking to set up some defense. Maybe the wrong time. Good damage could come to this mid turret as we get the rotation here from Zion Spartan. Sh Shifter having a death cap gives Dignitas some signs of life mm -hmm. at this point, because if he landed a really good shockwave, uh, it might be enough to turn a fight while Complexity is turret diving. But outside of that, it feels like Complexity has really just built up a pr an appropriate lead. And now uh, they're getting some very good pink ward vision control yeah. uh, in the jungle. And then if they sweep around the Baron pit, they could have a huge line of safety and actually just force a Baron. Full Triforce to a static Shiv, Cutie Pie. Trying to help the wave clear as they're getting pushed back here uh, as well. Good move by Dig to get this ward control back. So Dignitas still fighting a little bit. They just made so many very crucial mistakes in the early game against a strong early game team that it snowballed to this point. Uh, not even the first gank, but then the second gank that Crumbs tried to do bottom that kept getting turned by Kez and the really bad decision by Kiwi Kid to flash into a turret with Morgana Ooh. alt on him. Very spread on a few sides here. Frawley is pushing Shifter out to the left side. The rest of the team's trying to get back to Shifter now. That was one reel of Prowley spells on the Shifter, calling the rest of the team over for assistance. Good movement by Complexity, kind of dancing this one out, but will they be in the right spot at the end of this fight? The turret goes down, and now they need to focus the champions. Cutie Pie is so far into this one, he just walks into the middle of the fray. West Rice comes in huge. We oh, have no. not seen the top laner come in. The double kill for Robert X Lee, and the double kill for Kez as well. Dignitas got absolutely obliterated, and that's honestly what happens when you're 12,000 gold down yeah. 22 minutes, and that's when you decide to fight. Look Kitty at Pie that. tried to get one reset on the support Morgana, uh, and then there's four full damage dealers that come through from the rest of Complexity. Taking another look at this fight. Yes, it was a good start on the Bubba Dub. They were desperate for an initiation, but they're just not strong enough so at this deep. point. West Rice is so strong. Cutie Pie is dead. The Shockwave hits two full health people while there's no follow-up, and Complexity just gets to wreck the rest of Dignitas as they completely see fit. And now they got Baron. Oh, Bubba Dub died. That's cute. Did he die at the end of that fight? 
guess so. Man. You know what? Oh. Cutie Pie hit him with a Super Mega Death Rocket. Oh, as Baron. From the base. Good shot. We'll have to take a look at that. The unfortunate shot of death. We got about... Oh, here we go. Na, 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 na. Boom! That's a nice guy. Everybody else was able to back. Yep. He blocked it for the team. There That's you cool. go. I saw him put his hand up. Doesn't do much for him, though, unfortunately. <laughs> Aside from giving a nice one in the kill box. Hey, guys, we got Baron, except for Bubba Duh. So, probably now hitting an item threshold on his Zanyas as well. A little bit more of a playmaker. Complexity playing an amazing game. Referenced earlier, the last time they played Dig, they only had three kills. Shifter was, he, he got his pentakill that yeah. game. There's no pentakills from Shifter this game. The stark contrast from that game to this one has got to be quite concerning for Tignitas. Probably still pulling down the pressure of two and almost three now. Yeah. Brahmin and probably your uh, shifter rather are going to head back towards mid. Probably doesn't even have to move. 262 in his lane to 229 now as he starts to soak up the bottom and complexity moving into the mid. They're going to have to spread themselves very thin on the side of dig if they want to stop this push. And they're doing everything they can to West Rice. And West Rice is a pretty farmed dude. He's 300 guy. CS at 27 minutes. Like. We talked about him struggling in 1v1s. Mm -hmm. This was not the case. He got a lot of early help from Kez, but then he absolutely held his advantage extremely well against a very skilled laner in Zion Spartan. So this has really, this has definitely been West Rice's best game of the year. Definitely going to show to the other teams you cannot give complexity strong lanes out of champion select and then even an inch because they will take a whole mile or even more. I think yeah. we've got a, a marathon getting run here by complexity at 10 and 1 with a 16,000 gold lead now? Yeah. Good lord. Very dominant game from a team that a lot of people have almost written off being at the bottom of the list. Mm -hmm. So many changes in a league make it very hard to even kind of compose a team, even if you want to. Yeah. But they've, they've really come through a lot. And Dignitas is uh, really showing themselves as the biggest wild card. Yeah. In the LCS. But it's, it's a diff weird thought. Yeah. The fact that this means they've now lost to Curse and Mm -hmm. uh, complexity. Two of the three teams currently tied for last. It's a little bit weird. Then they had that incredibly one-sided game against Cloud9 where they won. Yeah. And then an incredibly one-sided game against Cloud9 where they lost. Complexity is the same, honestly, because the first game for Dignitas was just a cakewalk for them. Right. Already on to the outer turrets. Complexity really using the gold lead well now. I mean, at a certain point, there's no other decisions to make but to take what you can take because you have so much gold. But they're putting their foot down. They're not wasting any time either. Not giving Dig any. Shoot it! Robert's going to get it! Ha! Kept that gold for himself. <laughs> Got that get local away. gold for get the away from carry. The Funneling the farm. Man. Complexity feeling very, very good right now. Say that again. Very close to being worn off. And they're gonna keep themselves pushing. Zion Martin soaking up the bottom lane, but just really for a last push to hopefully not be the final one for Complexity. We're actually pretty still low on some of the, the levels here, so some of the timers not as high as they could be. Level 16 probably, however, to a level 14 shifter. So you're getting some big time alt damage out of one that you aren't in the other. The level advantage is also extreme in this one. Yeah. And it's such a turnaround for complexity as well. Like we've been talking a lot about how Dignitas did great against TSM yesterday and they're making the mistakes against complexity. But honestly, complexity against EG yesterday just straight up lost the 2v2 with Robert X Lee and Bubba Dub. And it was before Kez could make an impact in the game. This one, they were actually winning the straight up 2v2 in the bottom lane. So Robert X Lee and Bubba Dub had a substantially yeah. better performance in this one. And it goes to show you that Complexity is actually a very strong strategic team. They have good ward control, right. well laid plans, and if they pick strong lanes, can compete with absolutely anyone in the LCS. Right. It's it's very, like you said, a stark difference to the win or loss. Yesterday's game when they did lose, they only had one kill. But when yeah. they win, they one will death. make one death. Yeah. Exactly. 
just the complete opposite. Almost the same time on Dragon Baron. And have the objectives up here that may be used if they can get out of their base, but it's really just they need to hold their breath here and hope Complexity makes a big mistake. Because if you look at it, they can feel as if they can just walk right through the front door and not even be scared. Yeah, I wonder if Complexity, because they've lost so much this year, is going to just stall this out and maybe wait for the next Baron. Because they don't need to do this inhibitor right now, knowing the cushion of a mm. bull lead they have right now. Uh, but I've seen Stranger Things. Have you? I've seen a lot of Stranger Things. I saw a, uh, saw a woman slap another woman in a park the other day. That was strange. <laughs> They're fighting over dogs. Damn. Strangest thing? She was my hairdresser. There you go. Yep. I well, hope you don't get slapped. Never thought I'd you get a bowl cut. 18, 18 <laughs> grand on the clock. We're going to see if Complexity can slap Dig one last time here at the inhibitor turret. I don't know if it's going to happen. Back and forth. The tug of war begins once again between these two teams. Complexity giving Dig respect underneath their home base. But probably he's down on the bottom trying to wreak a little bit of havoc and draw some attention. Yeah, so the Baron will be up in 26 seconds, and it does appear that they're not going to try and crack that shell. It is pretty low, so yeah. if they could sneak up on it, but the fact that probably backed on a pink ward without killing it means that they can't get aggressive. He could just teleport back in if he really wants to hurry, but I think they're just going to be pulling back for Baron. Steady and slow wins the race. Let's see what they can get out of this complexity side. Hopefully they don't trip up anywhere along the way. The gold lead will definitely give them a bit of room to even make mistakes here. And they should be able, be able to even lose somebody early in the fight if they get caught out. Turn it around. Oh, one more. Got it. Nice kill. Uh-oh. Oh, there's a hit. There it is. Very nice ultimate in the Agony's Embrace from Kaz. On to Cutie Pie. He keeps hitting. The Randuins goes off. They are just sticking to Dignitas like glue here. One, two, three goes down. It's going to be Zion Spartan running from the rest of the team. Kaz is getting the hits on. He's going to be able to break out. But Complexity is going to be able to break down the base. That looks like the game. Dignitas just thought about contesting Baron. And Complexity jumped on and figuring they've drawn this out long enough. It's time to win. What amazing coordination from Complexity, knowing that they lost buffs in the early game. Kaz making a turnaround in that and completely carried in a domino effect. Complexity at 33 minutes is going to single-handedly, or I just say, take down Dignitas, 14 to one, and a 14,000 gold lead. What a shocking result, especially when you consider the scoreline of this one. Complexity, a team that was two and nine, coming into this against a Dignitas team who was 8-3 and three and looking at the top of their game. And then this happens. And I want to say single-handed at the end there for the lanes. Each lane came out so strong by themselves for complexity. And then when they did need to be a team, everything worked out even better. That's exactly what a League of Legends game look, should look like when you go from start to finish with the upper hand. Yeah, maybe the emotional high yesterday for Dignitas knowing that their rival coach, Loco Doco, had to get a bowl cut. It's just too much <laughs> to not focus on this complexity game. Uh, it definitely seemed like complexity was well prepared and yeah. playing mechanically well. For whatever reason, the missed flashes from Crumbs, the overstaying right. and laying early from Zion Spartan, and then the decisive team fighting from complexity down the stretch was just a total mismatch of the teams we expected to show up for this game. Right. It was like and they swapped jerseys. Yeah, to consider eight and three now eight and four against the two and nine last place team is now three and nine. Yeah. What an amazing result for that game to happen, especially for the early invade that Dignitas yeah. was, they wanted to do something different, try to innovate. And Kez being the new jungler on the team, you know, that's not something that, that Complexity has practiced as a team. They said, we need to react and adapt right now. And they did the perfect move. Yeah, Kez with that Evelyn pick, four zero nine which yeah. is participating in all but one of Complexity's kills. Early picking the cast in by Prawley and not getting punished for it. Wow, that, that blind pick cast. Yeah, pretty impressive. Prawley uh, has always seemed to have Shifter's number. I mean, we think back to the mm. promotion tournament where Shifter was on coast. Prawley was kind of demolishing Shifter in CS numbers, at least, in that right. event. Uh, and it was one of the big reasons Complexity was able to qualify and actually beat Coast 
And he kind of continues to hold that mental edge over Shifter for whatever reason. Really great game coming out of complexity. Everything even Crumbs did, or I'd say Dignitas tried to do, was thwarted. We saw the counter gank in the bottom lane right after Kiwi Kid died. You know, Dig stayed. And it was almost red that Crumbs is here, Kez. Get down here. Kez, big ups to Kez this game for yep. thinking that Kez was going to take a while to, you know, kind of get all his gears in order and get his bearings with the team, especially probably in and out at the same time. We kind of yeah. looked at complexity and said they're almost hurting themselves with all these changes in the beginning. And that, not that they can help a few, but probably had to go and come back. They vined yep. them out. Yeah, and it's a strange thing. Complexity said when Kez joined, they were amazed at how quickly everything just kind of worked with him. He was immediately starting the shot yeah. call. They were already on the same page shot calling. That's right. actually a really difficult thing. Even though teams do seem fairly similar when you're watching them, the yep. way they call them, the strategic way that they think about the game is very different. It takes a lot of guys a really long time to sync up. But Complexity kind of lucked out when they were able to find Kez. And it's interesting that they, they have been able to do this. I don't believe he's in the house yet, so it's still yeah. kind of that communication is all coming just kind of off the cuff because of what and the time or the time they have put in together. Flying by the seat of their pants. Absolutely. For more on Complexity's win and snapping their four-game losing streak, let's send it over to Freak and Kobe at the analyst desk. <laughs> Thank you very much. What's up, guys? We're joined by the bottom lane here, Robert X. Lee and Bubba Dub. Guys, congrats on the win. Come into the match against Dignitas. You got to know your underdogs here. What was the mindset coming in? Mm, we were thinking just play, play safe, play smart. Don't do aggressive calls because that was our downfall in a lot of our early game. We played to ham and we died for it. And this time it's, it's a game of inches and take, take what you can and try not to die. So the first thing that they kind of give, uh, give you and you guys decide to take is the Kassadin pick early. A lot of teams were previously just permabanding this Kassadin. CLG kind of opened the door where they're like, okay, we're fine with playing against it. Dignitas, were you worried that Dignitas had a plan like CLG did to play against Kassadin and it was kind of a trap or did you just jump headlong into this pick? Well, I mean, we, we saw a Zhao Wei Zhao against Kassadin and uh -huh. Boy Boy plays a good Kassadin and we know Prolly does too. So we decided to give it a try. And we've been playing it some in scrims as well, so. We, it's something we practiced and we didn't really think that Dig would mm -hmm. think, expect of us. And you didn't think that Dig was gonna be able to play it themselves as the first pick? It feels like Kassadin still like got that stigma as like you can first pick this champ. Um, I think Dignitas was prioritizing the Thresh ban because I've been playing a lot of Thresh and Braum and they wanted to take away Braum and force him on a champion that's maybe a little more uncomfortable. Okay. And that's what I read out of that. Mm -hmm. So I, I, didn't, I didn't think they would take it first pick. Wow. Okay, so speaking of the Braum pick, of course, it seems like your mustache is manlier. Of course, <laughs> you guys beat him up. Uh, tell me about Braum. So we haven't talked to a lot of supports about the champion all that much. Um, some we prioritized it a lot. Uh, so you picked Morgana against it. Uh, so talk to me about some of the matchups for Braum and also uh, why he's so first pick worthy. I think Braum is a really strong champion, but he doesn't have good hard engage, which a lot of the other supports that are top tier right now have a lot of, like good pick potential and hard engage mm -hmm. off of the pick. Um, he's, Braum is really strong at like defending an AD carry, like Jinx or Twitch. So uh, really good with non-escape AD carries, just uh, with uh, his crowd control abilities. And what about playing against him in a lane situation? Uh, playing against him is really scary. If he ever gets, hits a Q, you have to back off of a trade. Um, and then, because if he gets that stun, you're going to lose the trade no matter what. Okay. But he's, he's, if he doesn't hit the Q, he's pretty much like, eh, whatever. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's talk about really the main story of this game where you guys just won, which is the bottom lane. Because it seems like in a lot of the games you guys do win, bottom lane gets really early triple kills, you know, killing the jungler all the time. We have a replay we're going to bring up here uh, where, you know, Dignitas honestly make a couple of mistakes and overextend. Can you walk us through, you know, what was going through your guys' communication as this was unfolding? Okay, so, so... I think Braum goes onto me over here, so we land a good snare onto Cutie Pie. I dash out, and Braum for some reason flashes in, and we're like, is this for real? Is he actually <laughs> diving us? And then it was like, oh, okay, free kill here. And uh, and then from here, we're, we're saying like, oh, we might think there are junglers here, and Kez was calling that he is actually coming on his way. So worst case scenario, it's so a 3v2, and we actually get the bait, and, and we get a free kill onto Jinx, and I think Crumbs fails his flash over here in uh -huh. Oh yeah, and then Kaz is like, oh, free kill, free kill. We're going, we're going, we're going ham. And we, it was a really, really big uh, start for us. Yeah, so you guys had a similar situation in your upset victory over Cloud9 where you also got a good start like that and the jungler came and you also turned it around on them. At this point, 
Now, this is really, you're feeling like, okay, we can snowball this game, right? What is the plan after you get this big lead for the bottom lane to really exacerbate the issue here and actually finish this one? Well, before, it was bef it, I was thinking we should, you know, like, kill them over and over, you know, and uh -huh. try to snowball the game. But, again, I'll say it's a game of inches. Take mm -hmm. their bottom tier turret. Try to keep pressure on the lanes. Rotate to mid lane. Take that tier one. Let our Cassidy free roam. Do his thing. Do what Cassidy does best. Just kill squishies. And I would say we won the game from from that play. Yeah, you did a really good job. And I actually have an image I want to bring up that I saved from the game um, of your vision control that you had over Dignitas after this early lead. I mean, just look at this image. You got They literally have zero wards on the map right now <laughs> because of how well you guys have pressured them from that early start. Um, is that something that you guys consciously are working towards with constantly invading the jungles and switching out sweepers and bringing the pink wards? Yeah, that's yeah. definitely that we, we talked about. Uh, actually last night, if we actually get a lead, our goal of the game is to just control the jungle side that has pressure, so in this case bot lane, and just just starve out their jungler and eventually we'll just out-rotate them very easily with, with, uh, with all the knowledge that we had with wards. You definitely did that. Yeah, you guys played super phenomenally. I, I like the fact that you guys were like, uh, our way to close the game out is to play like a little bit slow. Just like play objectives that aren't like overtly on the maps, like oh, not just like rush all the dragons, but to to make sure there's no way coming back in. So I like that a whole bunch. Uh, Jat in the commentary is talking about you guys being a more strategic team. That like sometimes you guys have these individual misplays that betray you guys. Uh, is is that how you read your team as well? Where it's like if only we would stop screwing up the first five minutes, we'd win all our games. Yeah, I, I would <laughs> say that a lot of our games we've lost in laning phase, and I think a lot of it is due to uh, sort of the solo carry mindset that we used to come in with. Uh, we're trying to move away from that in order to let the teamwork kick in in the mid game and late game so that we can actually get there and just outplay um, other teams as like as a team rather than individually. Yeah, so I know in week two we had, I think, Broker Shard here and he was saying you guys weren't taking enough risks. You had to go like more ham. <laughs> Are you going the other way with it now? Like you got to play more reserved? Uh, it's, there's a fine balance. Uh, you have to have calculated aggression, not just uh, full on aggression. Okay. Well, All right. Well, let's bring up one more replay yeah. here. Um, where you guys really turn this snowball into an avalanche and you crush the whole team uh, at this mid fight. Can you walk us through this one? Do you want it, Bubba? Uh, you can do it. All right, so I, I know for sure. I can't honestly remember. We wanted to fight on. here. Yeah, we want, we're looking to fight here. And Kez gets an amazing flank onto Jinx. And, and from here, it was like, oh, kill Jinx, focus Jinx. And then from there, it was, it was like, game over. Just kill the front line uh, slowly, one at a time. So I just know probably it was going ham on their back line while I'm just, you know, just auto-attacking people in the front line, you know, just playing it safe, playing scared a little. <laughs> <laughs> you managed to go without dying, so I suppose that worked out for you, 6 and 6 on that one. Um, okay, so, so you guys have managed to sort of start refining your style, you guys are doing better. Of course, you guys had gotten shaken up with this roster change with Kez joining in, and of course, Broken Shard being out now for ultimately the rest of the split for you guys. How is Kez gelling with this roster now? Uh, I'd say he's gelling really well. Um, he's not a very loud person, so... Him coming in as a shot caller, uh, probably and Robert were previously shot calling a lot, and he gets talked over a lot, so uh, <laughs> we're kind of working with that, but other okay. than that, he's been really good and very positive. That's good to hear. So you guys are seeming to be going pretty well. Guys, congratulations on the win. We'll see you guys next week as well, hopefully for some more. We're going to take a quick break, though, and while the teams load in for our next match, TSM vs. Evil Geniuses, we're going to be right back after this. I'm on Jinx, I'm on Jinx. I'm on Jinx, stay on Jinx. I'm, I'm right behind him. Brandon, Brandon. Yeah, first stay, on, stay on Jinx, stay on Jinx. Careful, Jinx. Oreo, careful, Oreo, careful Oreo. Stay on Jinx, on Jinx, on Jinx. Finisher. All right, go for a shifter next, shifter next. I'm on Zion, I'm, I'm on Zion. Zion. Wait, do I get a Quadra? Oh, no. Taking it, taking it, taking it, taking it. 